For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kevin Finnan, I'm financial controller in the hospital. There's a, a group of us working on a heritage project to celebrate the heritage of the hospital, and we were tying this into the, the, the hospital cup. I think a few of you recognise yourselves in that photograph. But bear in mind, it's a tradition. That's the 1937-1938 the team. And we even managed to find... Oh, go back. This is video of St. Pat Patrick Dunn's on the matter at Lansdowne Road in 1923. And this Patrick is where... Were they really big team then, weren't they? Yes. They yeah. the so the game was at, at Lansdowne Road. Yeah, our... Our project is to establish a museum and archive celebration of the history of the hospital. It'll be the first museum and archive in Ireland. Matter Brisbane have done this already, so we're building on their expertise as well. We're building on the work of others. We're building on the work of the likes of Sister Eugene Nolan, who's written the, the history of the hospital, the 150th anniversary history, and Frank McManus, who's, who's collected a lot of the memory of the area. I just want to quickly tell you a tale of two patients. I know there'll be other patients discussed here this morning, but um, these are Tom Clark and Joseph Clark, uh, both patients in the hospital. The guy on the on the your left is probably familiar. Tom Clark, one of the signatories from 1916 Rising, was um, born in Britain, 15 years in jail was wounded just before the 1916 Rising when one of the other rebels who was practising at the time wounded him in the arm. Tom Clark walked from his house on Richmond Avenue down to the matter, being trailed by two policemen who were spying on him uh, to be operated on here. The older gentleman on the, on the right-hand picture is Joseph Clark. Now, you wouldn't get these two guys near each other. Joseph Clark from Monaghan, member of the Orange Order, member of the... Royal Irish Fusiliers, injured during 1916. Uh, both named Clark, both would describe themselves as Irishmen. Very little in common, but uh, both ended up as patients here in 1916. Um, if we move from after the War of Independence, some of the images we found have been like this, which was during a demo at, at outside Mountjoy Jail. I particularly like this idea, Morris, of um, if those officers behind there, and now the officers for finance are. I like the idea of uh, armour protection on the finance officers. Uh, this one's a bit more scary. These are uh, black and tans in an armoured car outside the, the hospital. Because of the proximity of Mount Joy, because of where we were located, this area of the city was quite hot during the whole War of Independence period. Uh, that's roughly at the same time another black and tan guarding the hospital. Thomas Ashe, who was a leading Republican, uh, went on hunger strike in Mount Joy. In the next cell to him was Tim Lynch's grandfather. He died in the hospital and uh, was, um, he had been a commandant during 1916. This is another piece of pathé for the, de the demonstrations on the area. And I've never seen Eccle Street so full. Um, I think that was connected with the, the demonstrations in Mount Joy at the time. That's again at the the back Berkeley Road wall. Um, looking to you to look at your relatives, what connections did they have with the hospital over the last 150 years in total? We're beginning with 1916 because it's a national event and because of wide popularity. We will move on to other events, be they as medical anniversaries or general hospital anniversaries. Was your relative a staff member? What are their stories? Uh, the question is, what did you in this in case of this group? It's your great grandfathers and great grandmothers, rather than some of us grandfathers and grandmothers in 1916. Um, if you want to contact us, we're at heritage at matter.ie. Thanks very much. Cool. History is interesting because history is verbal. History comes from verbal. His story, and the, here's his story, is not that far removed from hearsay. You know, where you hear something and you repeat it. And certainly, what I learned about the Hospital's Cup came, a lot of it, from verbal stories from colleagues and from the history of it. And when you actually go looking for the evidence, some of it is not quite as accurate as we think it might be. We've often said that the Dublin Hospital's Cup is the oldest hospital trophy in the world, a rugby trophy in the world. And I'll give you some of the evidence, and you may agree or disagree then after me. Certainly, if you go back into the history books, the London... Hospitals Cup 
um, was founded in 1874. The first final was held in 1875. The Irish Cup started in 1881, so we're not quite as old as theirs. The London one is interesting because it's actually the first match where it was 15 aside in rugby. Previously it was 20 aside. So it was historic for a couple of reasons in London. Now, trying to inquire as to why we can claim we have the oldest trophy is, there's two theories. One is that the English changed their trophy at some stage. And so our trophy, which started in 1881, is older. Um, that may or may not be, haven't been able to find hard evidence of that. But what there is evidence of is that they actually didn't play their competition for 11 years in the 1875 up to 2016 for the, because of the two world wars. We have a couple of gaps. We've lost two years in the First World War and two years in the Second World War. But it does mean we, ours has been competed for more. Even if their trophy is as old as ours, ours has been played for more often. So I think we continue to claim that it is the, the oldest. Um, Certainly, the Dublin Hospitals Cup is an institution in this city, has been going, as I say, from 1881. <laughs> is that what somebody thinks of what I'm saying? <laughs> um, the, it's, it's run by a committee of four people, of which I've privileged to be the matter's representative. Hannan Mullet represents Beaumont. Con Fury is the president. Con, as you know, is an ex-Irish international professor of immunology. And the work is done by Niall Swan, who's the secretary of it and is a pathologist in St. Vincent's. So the four of us are the supposed coordinating body. We're the ones who have to make decisions when teams start getting a little bit um, obstreperous or making some sort of um, interesting decisions about matches and players and things like that. Um, but it's a great tradition. Um, we encourage you all to take part in it, uh, to be involved in whatever capacity you can. And I must say, it's a great thrill to see it back in the matter. Thank you. Again, I think um, uh, Mr. Stokes there was uh, trying to explain the history of this competition. Uh, what's very hard to explain to anybody here who hasn't played or who's not been involved, I think most of you probably have in some shape or form, is what it actually means um, to a lot of people. Um, you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Full of water. Um, yeah, I mean, the. the one moment kind of uh, springs out to me uh, from the actual game uh, at the end after um, uh, 80 minutes of, of, of uh, normal play and 20 minutes of extra time and a huge concerted effort by the team that was really uh, characterised by you know determination, uh, coordination, all the things you see in a winning team and in one blow of a whistle all that disappeared extraordinarily rapidly and was replaced by uh, overwhelming joy, which was manifested as kind of a sudden onset movement disorder um, <laughs> and extraordinary scenes of celebration and joy that whoever was there would have witnessed this kind of mass Huntington's Korea type um, um, celebrations. And again, that was for me the most important part to see that because you don't celebrate like that and Colin will absolutely vouch for this. You don't celebrate like that unless you've lost games. And unfortunately, we'd lost too many at this stage. Um, but if anything can be taken out of losing games, it's the absolute <coughs> joy of winning them, and winning them like we won uh, on uh, 18th of December. <coughs> so it's extraordinary, and again, all the credit goes to the players. This is uh, all about the young guys. Um, it's all about the friendships they make, the bonds they have with the hospital. But also, it is a mechanism by which students mostly, but also trainee doctors and sometimes senior doctors, uh, kind of formalised bonds with the hospital. And I think in that capacity, uh, people over the years who've been extraordinarily important in facilitating those bonds being formed, like Mr. McEntee, Mr. Stokes, and uh, Hugh McCandless from the medical side, uh, people like Dave Ryan, who was behind the scenes for a long time, an extraordinary supporter of the team. But more recently, uh, Prof. Colin O'Brien has been, I suppose, the engine behind the whole thing. And of all the senior medical staff in the hospital, I think he deserves the most credit. I think we owe him a round of applause for, for all his efforts. <laughs> Anybody who's played it will re realise what it means to them and what, how much they get out of it. Uh, it is a two-way street. They get a lot out of it as well as giving us a lot as well. Um, so we need to support them and thank you all who have supported so far in, in the form of kind of going to the golf tournament, uh, helping out on the way, etc. And more will be asked of you, I'm sure, over time. But thank you for everything. Great. <coughs> Colin, as it was originally bought in 1847 as a hunting cup, and it was handed back and, and bought by the medical students in 1881 yeah. in a pawn shop.
So I think that the trophy itself was probably the longest running trophy. It the was competition made nothing. It was last one still, Colin, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so finally to the team. So David unfortunately sick in, in Limerick with the cup. Does anyone want to say any, any anything, Patrick? does belong in friendships. Um, before I started medicine, I didn't know anything about the hospital school. Didn't expect a lot, but been having played in it for going on six years now. It really is just a fantastic uh, cup. You really get to know people older and younger than you. And it's, uh, it's a great way to get to know people across various stages, and it does give you bonds with various hospitals. Yeah, great. Any other thoughts, memories, being St. Vincent's? They've been around for six years, haven't they? Yeah. Chances of winning it next year? <coughs> Very high. <laughs> Why? Uh, a lot of these guys will be coming back. Um, if you give them intern jobs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have about six guys in final night or more. <laughs> I did. Okay, well, fantastic. So just to, just to congratulate you.